So here we are with a little fry. I've uh, managed to upset them a little bit actually, but I've just fed them so they're not uh, they're not after any food. Plus they've got an orange in today, so they've gone through that pretty quick though, to be honest. Right, so what we're doing, I have got to heat this pond really this year. Well, I haven't got to heat it. It stays at 16 degrees because of the heat in the building. Um, so it's, it's a reasonable temperature, but I'd quite like to keep it a little bit higher this year. Last year the fry were pretty good on 16 degrees. I'd like to keep them about 20 this year. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a heater on it. And I want to put a one kilowatt little heater on. I've got this one. And I'm just going to mount it there on the uh, inlet to the filter. So this, what is this heater? It is a cloverleaf one kilowatt little fish heater. And it's a great little heater. I've actually just bought this one specifically for this job. Uh, but I do have another one. I've got this one here, a two kilowatt heater. This one I've been using for a few months on my outdoor quarantine tank. And I used it because the vat drops a lot in temperature at night so it was good to just have this sort of set to a temperature and it just kept the vat at a reasonable temperature at night it stopped so much temperature fluctuations uh, so I've been pretty pleased with this one it's a pretty good little heater the only issue I have with these heaters is that they don't have indication or anything that they've got any power to them or that they're on or anything like that uh, which is a little bit, I don't know, I mean I could if I really wanted to just like drill an hole in it and wire up some LEDs or something so that you could see it's got power to it or that the heating elements actually turned on uh, but I'm not sure particularly how bothered I am about that I think if it were outside and I were like trying to keep the pond from freezing I'd probably definitely do that because it'd be nice to know that, you know, it'd be nice to have a visual so uh, indication that your heater's not going to fail you because it could have you know it could have tripped out the fuse or something like that and not be running you just don't know it um, but yeah so I'm, I'm not too worried about that the cheap little heaters I'm quite happy with this one and uh, so I've ended up buying the one kilowatt version for this tank although you know I could have used the two kilowatt one on here but that is well too much even the one kilowatt is too much for this tank it just don't get that cold so it just doesn't need that type of heat um, obviously if you really really oversize your heater what you'll end up doing is just like increasing your pond's temperature by a couple of degrees in a really short period of time before your heater even realizes and then turns back off again and then your heater's got to wait until the temperature drops so you, you'll have big fluctuations in temperature so the uh, it's best not to oversize the heater too much so I didn't want to put the 2 kilowatt on Right, so let's get this one kilowatt one put on and see how we get on. So there we go, that's the heater on, that's how I'm going to put it anyway. So the water obviously flows up through it like that because you can only put them one way around. There's a little uh, flow switch in it at the uh, outlet side. So the pump will push against the flow switch and activate it. And then the water goes into the river. Uh, not quite how I wanted to install it, but I think it's the best way of doing it, best place to put it. And uh, don't look too bad, I guess. And we'll see if it leaks. Obviously, there's no water flowing through it at the minute, so let's go and put the pump back on and see if it leaks. So there we go. It's all plumbed up, and the water's flowing through it. All I need to do now is wire it up, get it wired. So what you got on the end of these cables? It is some little uh, ring things to attach it to something. Oops, that's not really very good for me. You could put a plug on this, it is only one kilowatt. I'm not going to do that for a few reasons. I don't like putting plugs on heaters like this. It is essentially an immersion heater, it might be only one kilowatt. It's not, it's still get your plug warm. And uh, it's something that can be on quite a long period of time. So I personally prefer not to wire these up onto a plug. Um, but obviously, a lot of people do. It's uh, personal preference. But I'll show you how I'm going to wire it up because I think it might be interesting to a few people. This one down here is a 2 kilowatt version and I've got this on a 16 amp caravan plug. Again, uh, overkill. I admit it, but there's two reasons. Well, there's a couple of reasons I've done this. Um, this, is outside, this was outside, so it's a bit better waterproof plug. And uh, it's nice, thick 2.5mm cable. 
so I prefer to keep that on a two and a half mil extension cable which is obviously a caravan plug because you can't really run a two kilowatt heater on any extension cable uh, it'll just get your cable out because most extension cables use one and a half mil cable at the thickest uh, most of them use one and a quarter which just can't cope with two kilowatts for any period of time so it just be hot all the time so that's my reasoning for putting a 16 amp plug on it and using one of them orange caravan cables uh, because obviously I needed it away from where the power was anyway so yeah I prefer to wire things up a little bit better than perhaps normally would uh, but there's also another reason why I'm going to plumb this in a bit more effectively a bit more, a bit more permanently uh, and that's because I have a backup generator and I can't have the backup generator powering that it'll stall the system, I know it's only a kilowatt, it can run it but it's just extra load that the generator doesn't need to be working to do so I don't need that running off the generator so it's going onto a different power supplier than what the rest of the fish house is so here we are again with the little fries looking happier this time, so the temperature is now 18.6 degrees let's say which is 18.5, drops slightly so that's fine so we've got the heater on and it's all wired up now and what I've done is I've just put a little uh, fuse switch just here so if I turn that on the heater should have power and uh, again this is a little bit you know I'm, see, I don't even know if the flow rate is going to trip the uh, little switch inside because there's a little inside these heaters so that they don't run dry or run when there's no pump on where is it I'll give it that side there's a little if you look just there's a little metal uh, sort of flap that comes down like that and the water pushes against that and operates a little relay if I can reach it you can just hear it clicking when it when you push it so the water's got to push that to operate the uh, heater or the heater won't run so you don't know exactly if the flow rate's fast enough to push that uh, switch on so I really wish there were a little light inside in it just there, that would be so cool so I think eventually I will uh, get some little LED lights off eBay and wire it in and uh, it will just light up when uh, heat is on but for what I'm going to do now is it should be on, I've set it to 20 degrees and I've heard it click and I'll put my ear to it, you can hear the little uh, thermostat in it click on uh, so what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of time and just see if it comes up, so we're still at 18 you know, after degrees, but uh, see if it comes up and see how we get on. In fact, it might be interesting to put this on the pipe at the other side of the heater. Yeah, so that registers 20.5, and then that registers 19.1. That's oh, so it, does work then. So 19.5, 20, let's see what it is in the heater. Yeah, so it does. It is 20.5 coming out of the heater and 19, 19.0 going in it. So that gives you a good indication that the heater is actually working. Then I guess. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how I've wired it up in the basement because I've got this little fuse switch, and then that runs down into the base. So here we are in the basement, this is actually the main consumer unit for the fish house so this is where the pumps, the UV lights, the air pumps get their power from in fact they're all, uh, they're all written down on it so this is the pond side of everything so that if all goes wrong with the pond it, it doesn't isolate from the building, vice versa the buildings this one so this is your lighting, your sockets, your outside lighting and stuff like that so that's all here, but that's not where the heaters are wired up and obviously this has got the uh, transfer switch to be connected to the generator uh, manually, that's the manual one, there's also an automatic one in the house so if we go into the lower part of the basement we'll find another consumer unit and uh, this one's got three fuses in it so this one's a 40 amp one, that is for my main pond's heater and then that one's for these sockets here and then that one's for that heater I've just put in and the reason there's a different consumer unit is this one doesn't connect to the generator automatically so if the electric goes off to the house the power goes off to this consumer unit it can't be powered by my backup generator because if 
if these there's no point in these loads being on my backup generator they'll just stall it especially the main 8 kilowatt heater that one which if it is ever on which it hasn't been on in three years um, it would stall my generator straight away so that's how I've done it, I wired it up to this and then it's totally separate um, and isolated from the generator and it's not going to take much to keep this pond at temperature, it's not going to cost much to keep it at 20 degrees the building's at 20 degrees anyway so what will happen is if this does radiate heat it'll just heat the building up so it'll stop the building's heater running as much uh, so I'll not lose that, it'll not really cost me any more to run that than it will do to heat this building anyway so it's not it's not too much of a problem. So here we are with the little fry, we're actually on the next day now to see how they're going on. And uh, the temperature has been really quite consistent at the 20 degree mark, which I'm pretty pleased with. So it's 20.4 at the minute, which is pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. So it's actually quite a sensitive thermostat in that, I find. It really sticks at that 20.3. Uh, mark when I've sort of set it around that temperature. How I did that is I've sort of just been watching the temperature and seeing whether it's on or not and then just turning it up a little bit slightly more so I've got it from that 18 degrees to this 20 that it currently is at and if I just upset the fry I don't have much food left in this tub, see if we can if you want something to eat. There we go. Actually this net fell in the uh, tank yesterday, we are messing about with it and there's actually a few few fry out of the net now uh, which is uh, which they're doing alright, so I could probably let them out at the net quite shortly and they should be fine The only reason they're in that net is because of the holes in that bottom drain down there some of the fry can actually get through it and go to the drum filter uh, the way me, me hurt by the drum filter because there's no pump, they'll just go through this pipe here and into the drum then I've got to fish them out and put them back in here uh, which is what I had to do yesterday when they all escaped this net but they've been doing pretty well so far, they've grown a lot since I first got them and uh, hopefully they'll grow even more, maybe even better because of the extra heat that I've put on them, I'm not sure but they never really went that cold anyway in this tank so I didn't think it was too much of a problem um, I have noticed since it's come up the temperature since I brought it up to 18 degrees with the other heater uh, from 16 there's been none of them die at all uh, whereas before occasionally there were one or two dead um, but I've not seen any dead since I brought it up to uh, 18 degrees but they've been doing pretty well really good down these oranges it doesn't take them long to uh, strip all orange out in it which is quite interesting so there we go I hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it then please like it if you want to see more videos like this then please feel free to subscribe if you have any questions or comments then please put them down below and I shall see you in the next video thank you for watching